Hi folks, welcome to episode 83 of the Epochs of the Lotus Eaters. I'm of course joined by Bo, and today we will be discussing John Henry Holiday, otherwise infamously known as Doc Holiday, who I didn't realise was a real person. I thought he was kind of a fictional American character. Oh, okay. But I mean, he's, you know, in a bunch of like, you know, westerns. You know, you know Doc Holiday, Wyatt Earp. I just figured these were kind of made up characters. Which, well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And a fair bit of his life is uh, mixed up with fiction. Yeah. That's uh, right. A lot of these, well, all these people are in the full light of history, as we say. Right. But also, there's loads of myth, yeah. myth making, and storytelling yeah. wrapped up in it as well. Yeah. That's why I yeah. assume they were just fictional. Yeah. Like no, he's a real dude. Right. Real okay. Guy. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, so we're in the old west, are we? Yeah. Where we did a very long set of epochs all about the English monarchy, and we sort yeah. of made a conscious decision to move away from that last time we went to the far east hmm. to china i thought we can go to the far west yeah, yeah okay uh the old west the wild west um not really out to the west coast but it's, it's about as far west as you can get hmm. um and um doc holiday is probably my second favorite character from uh american history well, who's your who's your favorite oh uh well, daniel boone I love the story of Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone. He's one of the original frontiersmen from right. generations before this. Well, we'll talk about him another time then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I love his story. But Doc Holliday, again, I'm not really going out on a limb. Hmm. Most people that like the Wild West, because um, I love a, a John, old John Wayne film. Yeah, everyone or, does. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone that likes the Wild West gravitates towards Doc Holliday. He's hmm. sort of undeniably a brilliant character. Right. Um, he's been played loads in, there's been lo lots of films. Hmm. Um, obviously, Tombstone, mm -hmm. 1993 Tombstone, where Val yeah. Kilmer plays him. Yeah, I remember. That's the only uh, one I really remember. He was also played by Dennis Quaid. I nearly said Randy Quaid then. That would have been very different. He was played by Dennis Quaid mm. in the film White Earp that came out at the same time. Um, but he's been played by loads of people. Cesar Romero, the original, do you know the, him? The original know Joker the from, yeah, yeah, yeah. from the Adam West Batman. He played... Doc, back in like the 30s or something. Right, okay. Uh, it's been played by Kurt Douglas in, yeah. in The Great Gunfight at the OK Corral. That's right. one of the real classics. Um, there's a f another film, Hour of the Gun. It, it's just, uh, but as we said already, there's loads of myth-making and storytelling. Yeah. So some of this, if anyone's out there who really, really knows their Wild West stuff and the life and times of Doc Holliday and the Earp Brothers, <clears throat> I may say something where you might think, oh, that's not quite right, or I've heard something mm. different. Well, again, just like it, when we're doing a Plutarch or something, yeah. there's quite often more than one story. They don't even agree exactly how old he was when he died, but he did die young, so he's got that sort of John Lennon thing going on. <coughs> yeah. It was only about 36 when he died. Right. Um, and that's a big part of his story, that he was sort of dying of TB mm. his whole adult life, really. Yeah. Um, and so that's sort of a big part of his story, but mm. we'll get into all of that. Okay. Um, so the thing to mention is that his story is wrapped up with that of Wyatt Earp and the Earp brothers. Yeah. There was loads of Earp brothers. Right. Uh, uh, there's like five important ones, but I think there was more. I think he had eight siblings in all, not all boys. Right. But there's the oldest one, Virgil, yeah. and then there's Morgan Earp. Yeah. And in fact, Doc Holliday was really, really, really close friends with Morgan Earp, who's played by Bill Paxton in Tombstone. Um, they was pretty much drinking buddies, almost inseparable for a while. Hmm. Um. Because Doc Holliday is a gambler and a gunslinger. Hmm. You wouldn't think he'd be friends with lawmen because the Earp brothers are lawmen. That's what they are, hmm. like sheriffs and mar US marshals and stuff. That's their story. Yeah. Um, and it all culminates, well, it doesn't even culminate, but um, there's a massive shootout. The most famous shootout in the yeah. Wild West is the at the OK Corral in Tombstone, Arizona. And Doc Holliday's involved in that. I didn't that. even realise it was real, to be honest. Yeah. I, I just thought this was American myth-making. Oh, no, so no. this is... You know, I, I didn't even realise it was really based on true events. Yeah, no, it's um, it. it's sort of well documented. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, and that's one of the things why, uh, as a historian, hmm. it's good because as a real history nerd, you sort of want to get to what really happened. Hmm. Um, and so, well, m maybe now is a really good time just to mention some of the sources. Yeah, the sources um, are going to be like uh, various Wild West magazines, aren't they? Like, yeah, like newspapers. newspapers at the yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. So there's there's places like. Uh, the, the True West magazine, the Dallas Weekly Herald, the Denver Republican, the Rocky yeah. Mountain News, the Leadville Daily Democrat, the Tucson Star, a bunch the of Dodge City Times. Exist. Maybe, yeah. I mean, San Francisco of... Inquirer sounds like something I've recognised. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know if it still exists. Yeah, but yeah. So loads of it is sort of well documented. And like, for example, the shootout at the OK Corral was witnessed by loads of people. Hmm. And, you know, they write letters and hmm. they write memoirs and they get interviewed after because it was famous at the time. Hmm. Well, I mean, it would be, wouldn't it? 
even at the time back east I remember like, in New York and Boston it was everyone was talking about it I remember watching a documentary a while ago uh, that was about the wild west and how actually it wasn't quite as wild as everyone makes out uh, you know the, the 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 number of actual like you know gunfights was very very low and so like one giant one at the OK Corral would of course make headlines everywhere because this is huge this is major news uh, and that's presumably why it's famous yeah i mean that's that's true uh, it depends where you were and when sure. So they had things called boom towns. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Tombstone, Arizona was a, a perfect example of a boom town where there's nothing there. Mm. And then someone find, well, in this case, in Tombstone, they found a silver, uh, it was a silver mine. They found mm. a seam of silver in the hills. Yeah. And so suddenly, literally within three years, it went from nothing to like a few yeah. thousand people and there's all saloons and, and all yeah. sorts of things going on. Um, in, in a slightly earlier age, because here we're talking about the shootout, the OK crowd was 1881. Hmm. But in 1849, there was sort of a gold rush, yeah. the 49ers. You had lots of boom towns spring up. Um, and then quite often they would just disappear again after hmm. the natural resources are gotten. They would sort of just be left. Hmm. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, so Tombstone in Arizona is one of those. Um, so I've, just to try and set the scene um, for a doc mm -hmm. i've got a few sort of quotes from different people um oh sorry still just on the um on the sources one of the big ones is Wyatt Earp mm. so Wyatt Earp himself survived all of this he lived to be i think in his 80s he lived to be an old man really? yeah okay. in the early 20th century he lived into yeah. the early 20th century um, and he wrote his memories and things yeah. and uh, another guy is really important uh, bat masterson was his name. There was a Ma the Masterson brothers were also, li they were like the Earps. They were like these brothers that were right. um, lawmen. Yeah. And uh, Bat Masterson's sort of important. He could do a whole thing on him, <clears throat> but he also lived through it all essentially right. and wrote his recollections about Doc and all this sort of thing. Yeah. This is uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and there was this one guy that uh, called Stuart Lake. You know, it quite often happens with someone important. There's one biography that everyone that yeah. like dominates it, and everyone's read that one biography. Mm -hmm. And if that's wrong, then in the popular consciousness, it's sort of wrong for all time or nearly. Yeah. You need revisionist historians to say, oh, actually, mm. that's not true and stuff. There's a guy called Stuart Lake who wrote a book called Wyatt Earp, Frontier Marshal, in 1931. Right. And that's what loads of sort of the lore of Doc and Wyatt Earp comes from. There's a lot of it wrong. Uh, yeah, well, not, not a lot of it is wrong, but bits here and there <laughs> right, are right. like, that couldn't have happened. Doc right. can't be in two places at once. That's one of the main things about yeah. Doc Holliday is that he, he he's said to have been in loads and loads and loads of different places. Mm. And he certainly travelled around the Midwest, but he couldn't have been everywhere at once sort of thing. You know, The, the thing I find uh, well, interesting about this is just the names are so cinematic. Like they it's just roll off the tongue that just sound like they're made for movies. You know, it's crazy, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's loads of great names in this. Yeah. At one point, I'll name the Clayton Gang. They're like sort of the arch. Uh, <laughs> Sound great. The <laughs> yeah, Clayton the, Gang. It feels real, you know. The Clayton Boys and the yeah. old man Clayton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> at one point, I will list uh, that's basically yeah. the names of their gang. They call themselves the Cowboys. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, they're just like classic Wild West names, really. Mm. And one thing I'll say real quick is the Wild West, uh, the historians of it, uh, sort of always talk about or argue, when did it start and when did it end? That's one of the things. Wow. Um, in my opinion, and this just is my humble opinion, is that the Wild West sort of ends when Doc Holliday dies. Really? That's just my opinion. Uh, because well, in 1887? Yeah, by that point, they've got sort of electric lighting. Right. Um, and <laughs> and just, telegraph. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, when I started playing Red Dead 1, Red Dead Redemption yeah. 1, I realised it was set in 1911 or something. I'm thinking, oh, it's a bit late. <laughs> yeah, what? Because yeah. that's, that's the thing, isn't it? it like, a lot, a lot of mythology is because of distance right and it, it, it's like okay this like you know this happened and we've got like a, an account that filters through so many different people who are, none of which have been you know present at the place that it becomes this kind of legendary story that we we bring to it the 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 sort of moral aspects of it that make it memorable, right? right yeah, and that, yeah. you know, so we're like, yeah. right, okay, we like that guy. He's the hero. He's the villain. Whereas, like, as soon as as soon as you've got, like, real time, like, on the ground reporting, like, the the age of Twitter is nothing can be mythologized anymore because there's a, just sure. a video of it going around and everyone's seen the video instantly, you know, and it's the same thing with the Telegraph. It's like, right, we've got a first-hand report from the day it happened in, you know, on the other coast of the United States. Well, there's no mythology now. You know, it doesn't filter through a bunch of different people who never had any first-hand experience of it to put their own sort of moral slant on it. 
mm. you know? Mm. And so I, I think that's the reason, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, and, and yet you're absolutely right. And yet saying that still somehow there's loads of, there's, there's still loads of stories where people well, say, well, could that, when we look back in it, yeah. real scholars look yeah. back on it and like, that couldn't possibly be the case or... Yeah. But we, um, I think the, this, this, the, you know, the sort of white herb doc holiday sort of generation is the last generation where mythology yeah, can really okay. be created. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, and then yeah After yeah, that, it's yeah. all sort of modern records. Yeah. yeah. When you go back to sort of Alexander, for example, there's such massive scope for it. Yeah. Yeah. A such Anything, massive you know, scope. You, you, you know, with you know, builds a giant iron wall to hold back Gog and Magog. It's like, did he? <laughs> <laughs> did he really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, it sounds like he did. You know, what what year was that? No. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things you mentioned, there I think, is interesting is the uh, uh, you mentioned in passing there uh, the idea where it's sort of maybe the line is blurred between whether people are sort of just morally good or not. Mm. So, for example, Wyatt Earp is obviously the good guy, right? But he was also fairly undeniably a murderer and a pimp and a gangster on some level. Sure, but that probably doesn't uh, get filtered into the uh, Hollywood rendition of it. Right. right. <laughs> like he didn't do that in Tombstone, did he? Uh, yeah, he was yeah, he was never convicted. Like I say, he lived to be an old man at yeah, liberty. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. he was certainly a, a pimp <laughs> at one point. Right, okay. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> well, Wyatt Earp wrote this of yeah. uh, Doc Holliday. Uh, that mad, merry scamp. He killed loads of people. That mad, merry scamp <laughs> with the heart of gold and nerves of steel who in the dark years had followed and stood at my elbow in many a battle to the death. He was a dentist but preferred to be a gambler. And he goes on to say other things, but then ends the sort of famous quote by saying, Doc Holliday was the most skillful gambler and the nerviest, fastest and deadliest man with a six gun that I ever saw. Hmm. So, you probably uh, saw a few too. Quick thing on that. Apparently Doc Holliday was very, very fast. Hmm. Because things like Billy the Kid, um, there's loads of mythology around Billy yeah. the Kid, loads sort of blown out of all proportions, if you believe all the things that have been said about him. But apparently Doc was very fast mm. on the draw, but not all that accurate. Right. If he wasn't, if you weren't right in front of him, he'd probably miss you. Right. Well, I mean, I suppose when you're being really, really quick, well, you accuracy suffers, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, some other lines just from different um, yeah. historians and writers. He's been called a mixture of elegance and decadence. Um, a, a gentleman and thug, aristocrat and drunk, a desperate invalid and deadly killer, an outlaw and a hero. Bit more very interesting character. Yeah, yeah, yeah he is yeah. a contradiction of things yeah. for sure. Yeah, uh, a whiskey soaked, bullet spinning son of thunder. You don't get much more. No, Western, these are awesome descriptions. Western yeah, yeah. than that. Uh, the slickest gunslinger in the West. Hmm. Uh, Bat Masterson said he was he was not a constructive citizen. Well, no kidding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I gathered that from the other quotes. <laughs> Basically, apparently, when because he was well educated and southern, he was from Georgia, from near Atlanta, Georgia. And apparently when he was sober, he was very sort of charming hmm. and uh, reasonable. Probably a useful man to have around. But when he was drunk, he was sort of, he was dangerous. Hmm. He was sort of really quite dangerous when he was hmm. drunk and he was drunk a lot. Hmm. Of course he um, was. One last quick quote here just to sort of uh, set the scene. Uh, one historian said, he was a mass of contradictions. He could be sh uh, charming and smooth. He could be nasty and downright, and downright brutal. He drank too much. He could be pathetic, pitiful at times, but he was still the dominant personality in the story. Mm. So Wyatt Earp and the Wyatt and the Earp brothers are really the main, they're sort of the real main characters, yeah, if you yeah, like. Doc yeah. Holliday's sort of uh, uh, just another character in their story, and yet yeah. everyone cares, everyone loves yeah. Doc the most, yeah. right? Well, you get these people with larger-than-life personalities that do that. And he's one of them, clearly. It seems, uh, one of the reasons why I like him, why most people like him really, is it seems that he was, he, he didn't care really about death too much. Yeah. He was just really fearless. He would just call anyone out, anyone, like the other really, really famous gunslingers. Hmm. He wouldn't hesitate just to call them out over almost anything. Maniac. And you kind of respect, even though it's like, it is, yeah, yeah. It is maniac behaviour, actually. Yeah. Um, you've also got to respect it, especially in their world. Nowadays, mm. it's a lot more like, okay, I just would never want to be near you then. Yeah. But in those days, it's sort of, it's kind of respectable. Um, yeah. In a sense. Yeah. It, um, in, a, in a sense, I can see why, you know. Um, yeah. You just, there, there's something kind of heroic about it. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, let's start with, with his, with his sort of early life. And things. Yeah. His father, um, was a major in the army, the union, uh, sorry, the, uh, well, to begin with just the U S army. And then when the civil war broke out. Like Doc was like nine years old when the right. Civil War broke out. And his father and all his uncles and things all went and fought for the Confederacy. They were from Atlanta, Georgia. Right, right, yeah. So firmly in the South. 
I mean, Val Kilmer plays him with a very, very heavy southern drawl. It's probably um, fair. Yeah. yeah. I saw one um, historian say, oh, no, that's much more Louisiana. They're overdoing it. Val Kilmer was overdoing it there. But, you know. Well, I mean, probably, but, you well, know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, and, um, and so, yeah, he is a, a boy yeah. of the South, first and foremost. He's not really... Uh, a true, true cowboy. Mm. Like his antagonist, the Clayton boys, they're from out there. They're from mm. Arizona. Mm. Um, and But he was, uh, you know, his mother's side of the family anyway, had money, had a plantation before the war mm -hmm. and uh, was sort of well-to-do. His father a bit less so, but was still a major in the army, so not nothing. No, no. It's... Anyway, he went to a fairly decent school, um, apparently did quite well. And then when he sort of comes of age... It, um, when I say that, I mean sort of 15, 16, 17 sort yeah. of year, oh, years age. They send him off um, to uh, practice uh, dentistry. Hmm. So where he's known as Doc, he's actually a dentist. Yeah. But in those days, you, you, Anything, you're still, yeah, yeah you're still yeah. just the Doc. Yeah. Because um, it's all sort of bound up in one yeah. thing. Probably the um, only person who's done any kind of medical training in the entire area. Exactly. Yeah. And he was good at it. Apparently he's quite precocious because you had to be 21 before you're sort of legally given uh, a doctor's or a dentist's license to practice. And mm. before he was 21, he'd already completed everything he had to in Atlanta. Right. Um, so he was sort of knew his stuff. Mm. He was no, no fool, really. Mm. Uh, one thing to say, when his father came back from uh, one of the wars before the Civil War, maybe one of the uh, wars down south with Mexico, yeah. he brings back like this kid. He adopted this kid. From Mexico, um, called Francisco Hidalgo, that um, that Doc grew up with. Right. And apparently, he taught Doc to shoot. Right. Okay. So from the early stage, from like fourteen or fifteen, Doc can shoot. Hmm. There's one story from his childhood. Again, I have to call it a story because it's not properly documented. Um, but some kid offered. Again, they're kids. They're sort of fourteen or fifteen. Yeah. Offered to have a jewel, um, and that was they. It was just like a. a a, a fake kid's jewel. You'd put powder in the gun, but not yeah. really shoot each other. But Doc turns up with a loaded, with a loaded revolver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does he shoot the kid? No, the other kid no, backs down. It's just God. like, okay, no, we're not going to. Yeah. I didn't think, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <We> were... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think we were really doing this. But it sets the scene for, sort yeah. of, you know, it gives an impression of Doc's character. Is yeah. that he's ne he never bluffs, really. Right. Never bluffing about anything. Mm. Um. If he says he's going to come get you, he means it. That's very interesting. Um, <laughs> also, he actually went to dental school in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. uh, Pennsylvania. Um, so he gets, apparently when he went there, that's a big city. That was the second biggest city in right. America at the time. Right. After, must be New York, I suppose. Um, and even though I say he was from sort of Georgia, Atlanta, he wasn't from Atlanta, he was from near Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, and so when he went to Philly, it was sort of apparently a bit of an eye opener for him, sort of a, a big metropolitan city. Um, but even then, straight away, he's into wh whiskey, whiskey and women, and Bill's wow. affair. Young, he's interested in having man. a good time. You yeah, know. right. What yeah. you need to do? Just enjoying himself. Apparently, even uh, then, he, he met a woman that sort of comes in and out of his life loads. Hmm. Um, a, a Mary Catherine, her name is. Mm -hmm. Mary Catherine Horoni. Um, has gone down in history as Big Nose Kate. <laughs> Not very flattering. She had lots of different names. She got sort of married or connected to different men throughout her life. Yeah. Uh, Kate Cummings, she was known as. Sometimes she called herself uh, Kate Holiday. Mm. Whether they did or didn't get married. As again, it's a classic example of, like you say, even though it's fully in the light of history, uh, historians completely disagree or can't agree whether they ever got married. Did they get married in secret? One time they apparently said they were married, but then later... That could have been just weren't. a story for, you know, to just, get, you know, someone to respect them or something like that, right? Yeah, well, if it was just a common law marriage that you can sort of walk away from yeah. or um, who knows. But she didn't have a big nose. Oh. Um, apparently she wasn't ugly, but she wasn't pretty. She, but it, that comes from that she stuck her nose in everyone's business. Oh, right. okay. She was like a gossip and just, right. yeah, right. that's where it comes from. <laughs> Sounds like a really unflattering name. Mm. You know? She was also um, a, a lady of ill repute, a prostitute. Bush and... Was, yeah. uh, and uh, and she had she had a bit of a drinking problem and a temper. Oh, what a shock! Uh, you know, like a gangster's mole. She yeah. was sort of a force to yeah. be reckoned with in her own right a bit. Unbelievably, he attracted that kind of woman. Right. 
It's funny how gangsters quite often do have really, really wild women. I guess it, they just, it just works, isn't it? Well, it's what they're looking for, isn't it? I you suppose know? so. And both yeah. sides are like, you know, they, they help each other out and they, they support one another's uh, delusions. Well, she gets Doc out of a couple of scrapes, really? saves his life, fully saves his life one time, breaks really? him out of jail. We'll, we'll get to it. Yeah, okay. We'll get to it. The okay. stories are so yeah. good. <laughs> okay. The big nose Kate, who didn't yeah. actually have a big nose. Yeah. In fact, just to say quickly on that, there was Wyatt Earp that coined that. Right. Because a, a lot of what Wyatt Earp wrote got made into that famous novel by Stuart Lake. Right. Um, and he did, He and Big Nose Kate never really got on. <laughs> so, <Right>. Anyway. <laughs> um, apparently first met her sort of early in life and they um, sort of their paths cross multiple times. Mm. Um, there is a story from when he's uh, really quite young, when he first has to basically flee Georgia Apparently, um, he went to sort of the local watering hole where his family would, you know, bathe and frolic in sort of a creek type place. Um, and there were some uh, black guys there. Doc and his family didn't take kindly to that. Well, I mean, they're Southern Democrats. Exactly. <laughs> he asked them to leave and they were just like, no, of course we're not. No. Yeah. And so one story is he just fired over their heads. Another right. story is he killed one of them. Another story is he just fired into them and killed multiple of them. Okay. Uh, right. Yep. We just don't know what yep. happened there. But the upshot of it is he fled. He fled. Yeah. Doc right. had to flee. Because right. even though a lot of this story is just crazy gunplay yeah. all the time, there's still laws. You can't just do... <laughs> you're not supposed to do this stuff. Like after the OK crowd, there was like murder, a murder yeah. trial and all you're sorts of things. You're not supposed to do this sort of stuff. Well, they did it a lot, actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but whenever there's a killing or a shooting, it's not just, oh, well, that's what it is. That's what it's like in the yeah. world. No, there'll be an investigation and probably a trial and all sorts mm. of things. Right, okay. Like Doc nearly got hung like four times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, just living your life like absolutely on the raggedy <laughs> edge throttle. all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. all the yeah. time. Because um, like I say, he only lived to be about 35, 36. And mm. uh, he packed many a lifetime of events into that, that, that short life. Yeah. Um, one thing to mention is when he was about 15, his mum died of consumption, right. which is TB. Yeah, which a lot of people die of in this era. There was no cure for it. They didn't really know what it was. Yeah. Like I say, didn't even, it wasn't tuberculosis to them. It was just consumption. Mm. Or just like um, lung disease yeah. or lung rot. Yeah. You just had a really bad cough until you coughed up blood until yeah. you died. Yeah. It would take ages as well, like a few yeah. years maybe. Yeah. It was like a really horrible slow death. And he sort of watched his mum die of it. And he was quite close to his mum. And he didn't really like his dad. Apparently he had some sort of problem with authority. <laughs> Can uh, you imagine? <laughs> yeah. He didn't hate his dad particularly, but there was some... They became estranged. By the yeah. time Doc has to flee Georgia, yeah. they're sort of estranged mainly. And it's not long after that, Doc's still only like, what, 21 or 23 or something when he gets diagnosed with TB. Oh, God. And at first they said, you've got like four months or you've got like six months to mm. live. Again, classically, accounts don't even agree on that. But they told him you've got, you've got less than a year to live. But he does live for quite a few more years. Good quite a him. few more years. Um, and one of the things they say to him is, again, it's really bad medical advice, but they say... <laughs> Uh, well, they say you need to go to a dry, you need dry air. Yeah. Uh, so like the higher plateaus of the Rockies and Is things. Is that bad advice? Well, it just, they, they wanted, they thought you should dry your lungs out. Well, I can understand why they would think that, but like, you know, it probably didn't do anything, did it? No, it's not, it doesn't no. work like that. No. no. It's probably like a, I don't know anything about tuberculosis, but I'm assuming it's a bacterial or viral infection. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it doesn't really matter how dry the air is that you're breathing in. <laughs> well, matters there's disease in your lungs. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. 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 Um, um, uh, towards the end, they say to him, uh, like right towards the end of his life, they say, go and uh, breathe in the, the, the sulfurous air of these uh, hot springs out oh, yeah. in Colorado. That's really terrible. That's one of the worst things you could do. <laughs> right, okay. And <laughs> high, uh, and, and high altitude, the air's thinner. Right. It's not really ideal. It's not really no. the thing to do. No. In fact, in olden days, they used to say smoking was good for your lungs. Yeah. Like in Danny the Champion of the World, like the early 20th century, they still thought that smoking would clear your lungs. Mm. <laughs> or go take a walk around the gas works. Yeah, that Breathe in. Yeah. 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 They still had no uh, idea of, yeah. of the germ theory of disease. Uh, medicine has come along so much in the 20th century. Yeah. And Doc is firmly a 19th century man. Well, I, my, my wife took me to a Victorian hospital in London, 
and uh, we were being shown around it and told about the procedures and things like that. And I was just, I was just walking around thinking, thank God I was born in the 20th century. Thank God. Mm, like, mm. this is just awful. And it's not their fault. They don't have any, you know, mm. they don't know anything better. But my yeah. God, you know, like the 20th century it, it solved a lot of problems and it eased a lot of suffering. <laughs> I think antibiotics is a key, massive one. And what was yeah. that? Like the 40s? Yeah. Um, and painkillers as well. Yeah. Just painkillers, just like. <sighs> I had bronchitis a number of times as a child. I think I might have died in childhood. Yeah, yeah. Of lung in the, infections. In a different century. Yeah. 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 Have you ever had a really bad tooth or earache? Oh, like yeah. You got infected. Yeah, I've had a, yeah, I've had teeth out because I've had a really bad tooth infection. And they give you some antibiotics and magical. Yeah, it's the, magical. The, the, isn't like it, the, really? the last time I had one out, it like literally just you know you feel a pinprick in your gum, and then it's just totally numb, and you can feel them like digging around, but you can't feel any pain. And then right, that's over. It's like right, okay, imagine doing that without any painkillers at all, where you can feel everything. You'd be screaming in pain, yeah. and it's just like and and oh just. It, it doesn't even bear thinking about, actually. Just to mention that, it <laughs> makes all these guys even braver. Yeah. Because they know that any injury, really... Is pain. Is... Huge amounts of pain. And you probably probably die from it. It might take yeah. days or weeks to yeah. die from the wound of yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, blood infection or whatever it is, but that's it. But it makes the idea of having a shootout even more it's insane. Crazy, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so... When Doc's like is still not that old, like I say, um, under twenty or mm. just under twenty, um, or around that point in his life, um, he they tell him to go to get dry air, mm. and he moves to Texas, whether it's Denison, Texas, or or, or, or Jacksboro, Texas, or Dallas. Mm. Most of them say it goes to Dallas. Now, right away, modern scholars of, of Doc and the Wild West, they say, well, that doesn't make any sense. Dallas is just as humid as Georgia, and it's not high in altitude. So, right, that part of the Doc yeah. holiday law just doesn't add up, doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. um, what can you do? And uh, so, first of all, to, to say, even though he's like trying to be yeah. a dentist and he gets involved in various practices and things, he is also straight away a drinker and a gambler. Right, of course. And what they would have, there was laws that you weren't allowed to drink and gamble. Oh. Uh, because everyone knew that just ended in bloodshed. Yeah. So what they, just to get around it, just as a workaround, most saloons would just have another room where you would gamble and you weren't supposed to do both at the same time, but everyone did. Yeah. And these saloons or bars were nearly always called a house of spiritous liquors. So quaint, isn't it? So that brilliant. is very quaint. A house of spiritous liquors. And all the gambling guys, the degenerate gamblers, really, Doc yeah. couldn't stop himself from gambling. Yeah. He was, it was his, an addiction for him. Um, they were always called sporting men. <laughs> it's a nice euphemism. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, so... Before we get into uh, the shootout of the OK Corral and the, uh, the, the Earp brothers and the Clayton gang, uh, just loads of stories because that's sort of towards the end of Doc's life. That's in the last sort of, what, uh, six odd years of his yeah. life. Um, there's just loads of stories about all okay, the different things he did. So, let's hear some. Um, uh, so, well, there's, he has a shootout with a bartender in Dallas almost straight away, Charlie Austin, Champagne Charlie. Champagne Charlie. They, um, I love they've all got nicknames. Yeah, <laughs> loads of them. Yeah. <laughs> He, uh, they didn't hit each other. Yeah. Some have said that when that happens, it's sort of not necessarily deliberate, but yeah. it's not like a deadly feud where you like, you really want to kill them. Mm. Cause when we get later into the, into Wyatt Earp's sort of revenge ride, they're definitely out for, <laughs> for the death. Yeah. Like then it's yeah. not okay until the guy's dead. Right. So this is not that he's still a young man, really. Um, he spends a lot of time at Fort Griffin. Mm -hmm. in Texas. Uh, again, he runs into Big Nose Kate for the second time here. This is where they probably strike up an actual relationship for the first time. Mm. Uh, but they, they, the paths had actually already crossed. Um, some say he killed a soldier in the street um, at Fort Griffin. He goes back to, he's, lots of these places he goes back to. Like he goes to Dodge mm. City more than once, Kansas, Dodge City, Kansas, more than once. He mm. goes to, comes back to Fort Griffin a number of times. Um, it was a, a, a private Jacob Smith uh, um Matt Matson tells this story. No one really knows who killed that soldier in the street, but some most say it was Doc, and Doc fled right well, after okay, it. Right. So, I mean, yeah. you know, obviously didn't from have that a good alibi, right? All right, right. <laughs> at the very least. Uh, he then goes on to Denver, mm -hmm. and there's a, a sort of fairly famous Babs Variety House. 
you can all imagine these things. It's like yeah. classic, it's a real cliche yeah. stuff, but they're cliches for a reason. No, but it's good. Um, yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, I love yeah. it. Um, <laughs> uh, I think if I was in Westworld, I would go to the Wild West thing. I haven't uh, actually seen Westworld. I've actually only seen the original film. Yeah, but it's where um, robot cowboys go on a rampage, right? Uh, yeah, ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I haven't I haven't seen it, but I've heard about it. Yeah. Um, um, uh, so he goes back to Denver a number of times in his life. And Denver is sort of high altitude. I've mm. been to Denver myself. Um, there's one story, uh, a guy called uh, Bud Ryan, sort of well-known figure. Uh, apparently there was a, uh, a disagreement over cards, over gambling. And this is a classic example of it. One story says that uh, Doc cut his head off. But Bud Ryan lived. He survived. Well, then so he didn't, did right, he? Right, so he definitely didn't do yeah. that. So, he cut his head off, but he got over it. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Obviously not. He yeah. got better. Yeah, his head grew back. Yeah, but they do say that he, he cut him up, because that was the other thing. Doc would right. always, not always, but quite often be known to have two pistols on him and a knife. Right. Um, so some say he sort of cut his face up a bit or something. Right, right. Which may have happened, um, I suppose. And that is really quite brutal mm. knife play is far more personal isn't it than shooting mm. someone oh, yeah. um so yeah doc was fast with a knife as well yeah um uh, he goes back to fort griffin there's a place there called smith's bar um he's be- sort of firmly sort of with big nose kate by this point mm. um he starts running up debts mostly for drink right um because though he's a gambler and a good gambler you eventually lose your money. Yeah. You're eventually going to lose. This is why I don't gamble. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Terrible gambler. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't even bother. I don't gamble. As a younger man, I got burnt a few times. I didn't even get burnt. I was just like, look at all these well, idiots getting burnt. I'm, yeah. I'm not doing this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. I once bet on uh, France to beat Senegal in, in, a, in a World Cup game. And they lost, right? Yeah. Of course they did. Ha- that, can't, that can't happen. Uh, mm, anyway. Can, did, and there goes <laughs> yeah. your money. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.